Thank you. Um, so we have with us our second speaker, um, also a very interesting man, who is the Prime Minister of Armenia. Uh, I have a special affection for him since he's an old, old journalist. He has been a campaigner. Um, he's been in jail a couple times. Um, he somehow emerged from jail to be Prime Minister of his country, which is an extraordinary journey. Um, I'm an old Moscow correspondent, so I've been in your country in the old days. Um, so I just want to thank you for being here. Um, you, you, you have about eight or ten minutes to say what you would like, and then we'll have questions from the audience. So, Mr. Uh, here, Mr. Mr. Pashin, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to express my appreciation uh, to President Macron for this very important initiative because I think it is really a very important platform to, uh, to discuss uh, contemporary challenges on security and for um, searching some formulas uh, to, for addressing contemporary challenges on security. Um, uh, what you should know about the security environment uh, around our country, uh, there is a very strange fact. Um, two out of four uh, our borders are closed and other two borders, uh, let's say, like uh, semi-closed. Why semi-closed? Because uh, from south we have a common uh, border with, uh, with Iran. And you know that um, um, uh, around the Iran now we have very um, tension situation and uh, our uh, northern border uh, is with Georgia and um, uh, tension relations between Georgia and Russia um, uh, affect um, to, uh, for, for the, uh, for the um, um, security environment um, around our northern border. But of course, uh, most important security challenge for us, it's a Nagorno-Karabakh issue. And um, uh, to be honest, um, becoming prime minister of Armenia and uh, involving in the international relations, I was surprised that um, uh, in international, um, international community, there are many misunderstandings on the Nagorno-Karabakh issue. And I think uh, there are uh, uh, some very important facts that everything, everyone uh, should know who is interested in Nagorno-Karabakh conflict should know about uh, this conflict. Why this uh, conflict emerged? Now, first of all, uh, the, um, the cause for that was the uh, decision of uh, Stalin regime to put Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, to give Nagorno-Karabakh a newly established uh, Soviet Azerbaijan. And when in 1986, um, uh, 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 Mikhail, or uh, yes, uh, 90, uh, 90, 1986, Mikhail Gorbachev became president of uh, uh, head of head of uh, Soviet Union, he started democratic reform process and declared uh, um, democracy, glasnost, uh, perestroika, and uh, uh, the uh, population of uh, the uh, majority, uh, vast majority of population Nagorno-Karabakh, who were and uh, are now uh, uh, Armenian, they decided, and and they had a status of. Uh, Nagorno-Karabakh autonomous uh, region um, in Soviet Azerbaijan, they, they uh, decided to um, use this opportunity and, uh, and um, uh, to, uh, to leave according to the laws of Soviet Union, uh, leave the uh, Azerbaijan and um, uh, Azer Soviet Azerbaijan authorities uh, decided to oppress uh, this move uh, uh, using uh, uh, leverages and using actually force uh, police etc and uh, 
the very beginning of this conflict started like that. And after that, when uh, the collapse of Soviet Union uh, started, um, Azerbaijan, as many, uh, many other Soviet republics, decided to, to become a, an independent uh, state. And um, according to the Soviet Union laws, if uh, some, uh, some um, uh, Soviet republic um, decides to uh, quit Soviet Union, the autonomous regions of that republic uh, are eligible to decide their own future. So, um, parallelly with Azerbaijan, as Azerbaijan um, uh, started uh, started independence process, Nagorno-Karabakh started independence process uh, too. And as Azerbaijan lived, quit, quitted the Soviet Union, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh quitted uh, Azerbaijan. And as a result of that uh, decision, Azerbaijan decided to oppress this uh, decision using force, using military force, and starting a war against the people of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. And uh, it could uh, seem strange, and there was many uh, casualties. Uh, some regions of uh, in Nagorno-Karabakh uh, were um, experienced. Um, uh, ethnic cleans, uh, cleanses, etc. And as a result, Nagorno-Karabakh, Armenian people of Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, which was the huge amount, 80, approximately 80 or 85 percent of population of Nagorno-Karabakh, they decided to start a self-defense uh, process. And uh, it came out that they, they are able to do that. And as a result of that, they uh, were able to um, to uh, bring Azerbaijan to force Azerbaijan to agree on ceasefire, and in 1994, uh, 12, Ju uh, uh, 12 May, a ceasefire agreement was signed between Azerbaijan, Nagorno-Karabakh, and Armenia. And after that, negotiation process started, and even before that. There was a creation of negotiation format, and internationally, Nagorno, uh, the uh, the conflict was recognized as international conflict, and uh, 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 this conflict, uh, according to international decisions, um, had and has three conflicting sides: Nagorno, Azerbaijan, Nagorno Karabakh, and Armenia, and uh, and. Uh, this negotiation process started uh, from from even from 1990, uh, 1992, and uh, within a very long time, Nagorno Karabakh were involved in the negotiation process as a as a side. By the way, there uh, some some um, uh, meeting happened between leader of Nagorno Karabakh and Azerbaijan, and there was uh, several meetings between defense ministers of. Azerbaijan, Nagorno-Karabakh, and Armenia, and um, but as a result, unfortunately, unfortunately, Nagorno-Karabakh conflict uh, isn't uh, uh, solved yet, and um, there there are several uh, reasons for that. First of all, uh, the main reason is that uh, from 1990 end, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh was put out from negotiation process. And uh, as a result of that, and uh, uh, as, uh, not only um, this factor, but, but the result of this whole process, now Azerbaijan is refusing to have direct uh, negotiation with uh, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. And uh, Azerbaijan refuses even to negotiate with Nagorno-Karabakh in the Minsk Group co-chairmanship uh, format, where uh, Russia, uh, France and United States are um, uh, co-chairmen uh, of the uh, of this format, and according to this format, there are three sides: Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Nagorno-Karabakh. And but uh, but uh, from the other side, Azerbaijani government is claiming that Nagorno-Karabakh should be a part of Azerbaijan. But it is very strange fact because 
it isn't possible to understand why Azerbaijani go government is uh, uh, going to uh, to put uh, Nagorno-Karabakh uh, in, into into his territorial integrity without negotiating with them. Isn't that very strange fact? They uh, leaders of Azerbaijan they are uh, saying that they want Nagorno-Karabakh to be part of Azerbaijan, but they are refusing to negotiate with the um, uh, uh, people of Nagorno-Karabakh. What could it mean? It could mean all, only one thing. They want territories and not people. And they want territories without people. And that is the common main issue on Nagorno-Karabakh problem. Because there is, uh, the, for, for, for Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh, it's clear that they won't have any guarantee of security in, the, in Azerbaijan. And you know, you, you, you can find very concrete proof of that. For example, no one, or uh, if someone has Armenian surname, it is, it is um, more probable that he or she can enter into Azerbaijan, even flying, even uh, even uh, being in the uh, airplane that uh, uh, had a um, um, landing in Azerbaijan in Baku airport. And recently we had several uh, cases like that. For example, a journalist from, uh, from Bloomberg with Armenian surname uh, wasn't allowed to, uh, to uh, cross the border of Azerbaijan. Another case, a musician with Armenian name from Turkish uh, the Turkish uh, orchestra wasn't allowed. Even even uh, eight old uh, girl with eighty old pension, uh, eighty year years old pension. But um, uh, but uh, recently, uh, uh, maybe in um, um, recently, a driver was arrested in Baku for listening in his car a song of Armenian musician. And I think there is most renowned case when um, Armenian uh, uh, player of Arsenal, Henrik Mkhitaryan, uh, wasn't able to participate in Europe, Europe League final, which took place in uh, Azerbaijan, in Baku, because of his Armenian Surname, and there was a, another very famous case when a when a fan of Arsenal with the T-shirt with name of Henrik Mkhitaryan was stopped in the center of Baku by the Azerbaijani police. But what? But this is this is our current situation, and uh, and what to do? But what next? It's obvious that we need to make real efforts to address the problem and for that uh, they, uh, uh, we have so-called opportunities uh, uh, equal maybe equal opportunities with leadership of Azerbaijan leadership of Nagorno-Karabakh to solve to address this issue and uh, from the uh, very beginning of my uh, election as prime minister of Armenia I've made unprecedented statement for Armenia I said that any solution of Nagorno-Karabakh conflict should be acceptable for people of Armenia, for people of Nagorno-Karabakh, and for people of Azerbaijan. And I was heavily criticized in my country because I am first leader of Armenia announcing that any solution of Nagorno-Karabakh conflict should be acceptable for Azerbaijani people too. So uh, a position in our country um, uh, is asking why leader of Armenia should take care on the interest of the people of Azerbaijan? But my 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 answer is uh, very frank and direct because I believe that if we if we want to have sustainable solution settlement of that conflict, we need to consider interest all parts involved in this conflict. And 
I've made this uh, statement in hope that we will have similar statement by the Azerbaijani leadership, by my colleague Ilham Aliyev, okay? I've mentioned, first of all, people of Armenia, and I understand that in case of Mr. Aliyev, uh, he, he maybe he should mention, first of all, uh, people of Azerbaijan. And I expect from him a similar statement that any solution of Nagorno-Karabakh conflict should be acceptable for people of Azerbaijan, for people of Nagorno-Karabakh, and for people of Armenia. If, if yes, we will, we will be, if we will hear such a statement from Mr. Aliyev, that would mean that we have breakthrough in the world negotiation process. And I, I want, I would like to call from this very important place with, with very important name, Paris Peace Forum. I would like to call my colleague at least to, to, to make such a statement that any solution of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh conflict should be acceptable. I, I'm, now I'm speaking on behalf of President of Azerbaijan, should be acceptable for people of Azerbaijan, to, for people of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh and for people of Armenia. Of course, it isn't easy task to solve, but as we took the responsibility for the future of our people, that means for the future of our region, that means for the future of our world, we need to make real efforts, real efforts to make real difference. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you very, very much. Spasibo um, Vam. I remember... Maybe I, I need some... Her, uh, I mean, I'll ask speech. questions in um, English. Yeah. But I mean, but there might be questions okay. in French. I, I, I remember talking to Arkady Volsky, ah, yeah. who tried yeah. and broke his heart over all of Nagorno-Karabakh. So I, I can just say, I hope you success, Yana Deus, we'll see. Um, we don't have tons of time because you have a meeting with Mr. Macron pretty soon, but let's take some um, questions this um, gentleman has been asking, and we'll see what language it, it is. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Bakhtiar. I am from Azerbaijan, but I was born in Armenia, in Vardinis, and I cannot go to my home as well. Uh, so you've mentioned many international uh, reactions, but there are four UN resolutions that uh, demand immediate withdrawal of Armenian troops. Uh, and all member states, UN member states, recognize Nagorno-Karabakh region as the part of Azerbaijan, within the uh, territories of Azerbaijan, including Armenia. And Azerbaijan has offered uh, like the highest autonomy where Armenians and Azerbaijanis can live together. This is uh, the first part, the international law part. The second part, uh, you've mentioned that Armenians cannot travel to Azerbaijan, but I, ha uh, I want to remind you that uh, there was a if you need a pen and a pencil, I can give you. Yeah. You mentioned... Yeah, yeah, I, I will give you. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, it's a gift from, uh, from Azerbaijan. So the second part, uh, you've mentioned that Armenian, uh, Armenians or citizens of other countries with Armenian surnames cannot travel to Azerbaijan, but I would like to remind you that during the closing ceremony of uh, the first European Games, which was held in Baku, Azerbaijani president asked the uh, audience to clap for Armenians and uh, people who won uh, at the uh, first uh, European Games. So my question is, we all understand that peaceful resolution of the conflict is vital for the security, stability and prosperity of the region. But when uh, you as the prime minister of one country visits internationally rec recognized uh, region of another country, Nagorno-Karabakh, Khan Kendi. And when you say that Nagorno-Karabakh is Armenia, period, how this helps to peaceful, peaceful negotiation process? 
It's clear. Because the Azerbaijani clear. president Thanks. also responded let that Azerbaijan, let, let Karabakh answer. is Azerbaijan please, and... Please, sir, Pajausta, let him okay. answer. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I will need some more uh, time to well, not not to skip any nuance of that well, question because... Yeah, okay. First of all, about, about Vartanis. Uh, you know, let's remember the times when Armenian where Armenians were leaving Azerbaijan and when as a result of that uh, Azerbaijanis were leaving Armenia. I remember very well on that time. What, why it ha happened? Because Armenians in Azerbaijan were killed in Sumgait. In Sumgait atrocities started, continued to Baku against Armenians and First of all, and, and that spread to Nagorno-Karabakh, etc. And they not left Azerbaijan. They fled from Azerbaijan. Sometimes it even without clothes. But what happened with Azerbaijanis in Armenia? According to the decision, decision of Armenian government, some buses wo were provided to the Azerbaijani people, there were police escort and no one, no one people, no one person, Azerbaijani, were damaged or, uh, uh, or um, um, hurt within that process. And it is very important and bright picture of the content of this whole, uh, whole um, conflict about the uh, International, you, you said that Nagorno-Karabakh is internationally recognized part of Azerbaijan. It isn't true because there is internationally established negotiation format named OSCE, Minsk Group Co-Chairmanship. And the mandate of that format is to decide on final status on Nagorno-Karabakh. Why? And you, you, your, your, your government, your country is involved in the negotiation process. So, if Nagorno-Karabakh is a part of Azerbaijan, internationally recognized, why are you negotiating for the decision, uh, for, for deciding the status of Nagorno-Karabakh? It, it, it isn't it strange. The other part, you, you said that you, uh, you are offering um, uh, high status Nagorno, for Nagorno-Karabakh within the Azerbaijan. By the way, Nagorno-Karabakh had already had that status. Nagorno-Karabakh was autonomous region and this status, I called it, I call it interim status, brought all of us to the to this conflict, to this bloody conflict, and to repeat, to 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 final, to repeat and to give or accept one more time this very same statute that means begin from zero, the same conflict and the same way. And my expectation to find to find solution, as I said to find a solution, as I said, acceptable for people of Armenia, for people of Nagorno-Karabakh, and for people of, um, of uh, Azerbaijan. And on my uh, uh, statement in Stepanakert, before that I've made a statement, as I said, uh, uh, I've just mentioned, and I was waiting for a year to her something similar from Azerbaijani government. And I asked personally President Aliyev to make similar statement to have a little, not very big, but little breakthrough in negotiation process. But unfortunately, Azerbaijani government is continuing to claim that Zangezur, a Sunnit region of Armenia, is part of Azerbaijan, Yerevan, capital of independent Armenia is an Azerbaijani city, Lake Sevan, 
a lake which is in Armenia is Azerbaijani lake and they are continuing trading to to occupy not only Nagorno-Karabakh but also Sunni region but also capital of Yerevan so why we we are making similar statement because we don't want to um, cast an impression of afraid afraid it nation of afraid it people no one is able to speak with us from position of force and we we are we are uh, we are our proposal is peace our proposal peace we aren't uh, um, uh, using we aren't threatening to anyone in our region and we are willing to prepare our nation society Azerbaijani people people of Nagorno-Karabakh for peace and we we uh, we uh, propose our peace intention to Azerbaijani people and personally me personally me I'm ready to start a dialogue not only with Azerbaijani government but also with Azerbaijani people directly because I think we have many things to discuss thank you very much very very good thanks I don't want to make you late for uh, Mr. Macron thank you for coming Prime Minister Pashinyan and best of luck Thank you all, and thanks to the translators also.